Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, your daily dose of tech news, gadget views, and answers that you can use. The Locker Gnome Daily Report is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces, the way I meet with my team online. With GoToMeeting, you can share the same screen, you stay on the same page, and HD video makes it like being in the same room with all those other people you're meeting with. You can launch or join a meeting using your computer, phone, or tablet, even present from your iPad. I use GoToMeeting to coordinate vlogger fare without actually meeting with people. Instead, I'm able to save time and gas and money. Try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code Perillo. Do you still use iTunes to manage all your music? You might, and if that's the case, you may be interested in keeping your iTunes clean with TuneUp. We've got a 40% discount available. Now, this is really only for those of you who still use iTunes to manage your music. I stopped using iTunes last year altogether, even though I didn't really use iTunes to begin with, because I just found it to be a, a kludge. It always caused more problems than it helped solve any problem for me. And I never managed my music through iTunes. I used uh, subscription services for the past few years. It was just easier for me to do. So I'm not an iTunes user, but I do know that many of you still use iTunes specifically to manage your music. This program, utility, app, whatever you want to call that sucker, is going to help. And we're saving you money on it. The BlackBerry CEO has come out to say that Apple's UI is dated. Interesting, but uh, really? Like, uh, maybe BlackBerry would be better off spending its time building a platform rather than throwing stones? T-Mobile says that LTE is coming this month and is updating the Galaxy Note 2 to take advantage of that new network. AT&T is rolling out 30 gig, 40 gig, and 50 gig shared data tiers starting at $300 monthly. $300?! Those particular tiers would probably be cut out for users who are heavy, heavy, heavy users. I barely get through 6 gigs a month and I share my data plan with Diana. There's my question for you today. How much data do you use, on average, on a monthly basis, with your wireless carrier? I'm not talking about your home-based or office-based ISP, unless, of course, the wireless carrier is your primary ISP. How much, on average, do you use? No, I don't live with my parents. They're currently living with me. They'll be returning home soon, and since my dad seems to be very popular in this channel, I thought I'd toss him the question of the day brought to you, my GoDaddy. If you want to save money on your next GoDaddy purchase, just email me, chris at perillo.com. I will send you my latest list of coupons. What do you use your smartphone for? I use it, first thing I do when I, I guess, power up my phone is I'll check my Twitter feed, and I'll check Facebook, and then I also check G, uh, Google Plus. And after I've done that, I'll check my email. So those are the things that get the, the most use are those applications. And then I use it when we travel or if I have something I want to put on YouTube, I'll use my um, movie camera application in the movie mode and make my clips. And then I'll use iMovie to edit all those clips down into something that's uh, somewhere south of 10 minutes. I like it. Keep it short. Shorter the better for me. You talk to more seniors than I do. How do they typically use their smartphones? I think most of the seniors use it similar the way we do. Uh, I think we all first got involved with Facebook simply because it helped us keep tabs of... Um, the family members, the people that we love, so that uh, we weren't bugging them by calling them all the time on the telephone. We could watch their conversations they do in Facebook and or Twitter. And if you had a choice to live without your smartphone for a week or your PC for a week, which one could you not live without? A PC or a phone. That's a tough question because I could pretty well do everything that I do on both. But on my computer would allow me to print, and I still print some things, so... But then I have to call people and actually talk to them. So... No, I guess I would like my phone better, now that I think about it a little more, because in addition to the things I just mentioned, I would be able still to uh, watch some YouTube and... Uh, and do some YouTube myself. So I would, if I had my choice between the two, I would stick with a smartphone. If you had a choice between your smartphone and your TV, which one would you not be able to live with for a week? 
Well, you know what? If I had eight, if I wasn't so cheap and didn't have to watch my pennies, I'd have HD service at home with DirecTV. If I had HD service, I could watch a lot of my TV on my phone. And right now, I can watch a lot of shows free on my phone. So, uh, and, and I always have YouTube. So, uh, if I had to give one up for the other, I would keep the iPhone simply because I can uh, watch TV on my phone. So, you choose your smartphone over a TV or over a PC? Yeah, based on what's on it, what I can use it for, yeah. Do you think a lot of people would do the same thing? I think if, uh, for example, we follow a lot of TV programs. We follow Chicago Fire, it's called, and uh, uh, Elementary, and um, Blue Bloods. Those are our, kind of our favorite shows right now. We were following uh, Zero Hour, but they dropped that one for some reason. But, like I say, once I could get those on my phone, I can watch those on my phone. Now, you choose an iPhone as your smartphone. Do you see other uh, people in your age range uh, of uh, uh, 104 and above? Um, do you see them using iPhones or other smartphones? Yeah, I think I saw in the Lincoln movie, I think he was sneaking a, using one. I have noticed that when I go into uh, a McDonald's or someplace, I'll kind of glance around now to see... Uh, who's got what, and of the seniors that do have phones, a lot of them do have, um, appear to have iPhones. Why do you think that is? Well, I think they've really kind of uh, honed in on uh, making it, the applications or the people that write the apps or whatever, have made it easy uh, to understand, and you can, um, once you get over the fear of breaking something, and you're willing to get in there and try it, they're pretty easy. The apps are pretty easy to use. What's one thing you wish your smartphone would do that it currently can't do? One thing. That's a good question. Help me fill out my brackets for this year's basketball tournament. <laughs> and I guess there's probably some place where I could go and get help doing that. Why did you choose the iPhone over Android? Um, I think a lot of it for me come down to the security issues. I, I think... Um, from what I read and when I uh, see that Apple's uh, systems, they don't get hacked as much or they don't get uh, penetrated as much as on the other platform, on like a, what I would call a laptop or a com regular computer type applications, Microsoft, I guess, or whatever, Windows or all those other ones. Do you think iOS is boring? Well, you know what? If, if, my phone is all iOS. I would certainly not say it's boring. Why? Because I can do all kinds of stuff. There's stuff available to me. Like every once in a while, I'll just go on the uh, um, store and kind of look at the apps that are available. And if I had a little more time, I would get apps. Like I find myself, I got a lot of apps on my phone now that I don't particularly use all the time. But every once in a while, if I get bored, for example, I have a golf app here and on my iPad. And I like playing the golf games on my iPad because it's bigger and I see it better. You know, you can't believe what you, everything you see on the Internet. Because someone put on there that I, Einstein kind of predicted that people would start using devices or communications that would uh, uh, have people get away from the face-to-face. -face. And I think the more we get away from the face-to-face, -face, that's not a good thing. I do think YouTube and those things help with that face-to-face. It's not, you're right there, but you're kind of right there because you're there and I'm here. Uh, so, but we don't have the interaction unless we're live. Are you going to Vlogger Fair? Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't miss that for the world. I'm going to go there just simply because I can vlog the vloggers and then maybe that'll help me uh, get mine uh, a little more popular. You know, I kind of admire Chris and all you guys out there that do them every day or even three or four times a week because it's... It takes a lot of thought and work to take everything you've photographed or movied or whatever you call it and and edit it down to very short clips so that it kind of flows and makes a little bit more sense. Thanks, Dad, and thank you for liking and sharing this video. Otherwise, we really have no idea that you're really out there. When you leave a comment, we know you're out there. Hopefully, generally positive comment. We love those, but we really appreciate when you share what you experience with other people because that really means that you like us and you know we like you. We'll see you later.